So when we're talking open access networks, we're talking full duplex, both directions, 60, 400, 800 meg, right? It's, it seems like overkill when you think about it, you know, right now. But we, we've got school divisions that have 800 meg servers, right? The head ends are, are using that kind of app. The key differentiator between the local access or an open access network and a regular telco network, it's not best effort. What you buy is what you get. So you have a 60 meg service and you're in high level, you get 60 meg throughput up and down, full duplex, right? Not uh, what we get down, which is download speeds being different than the upload speeds, right? And uh, it kind of leads to the technologies that are out there. And right now, uh, you'll see stuff like I work on the DWM uh, Sonic type systems, and Axia uh, bids on uh, other <coughs> access networks. It's, it's an idea that's, that's growing. But if anyone's ever thinking about doing something like this, as far as government goes, um, we go point to point Ethernet. We don't do pawn. Uh, we don't do optical Ethernet where you're sharing bandwidth. Because the stuff that's going on these networks are mission critical. Like, I mean, we're talking hospitals downloading images. We're talking, uh, they're training people uh, remotely on operations. You can't have someone's video conferencing interrupting your, your service, right? So uh, that's the kind of stuff that we're, that we're dealing with. This is actually, I'm going to spend a fair amount of time on, on this slide because it's kind of the crux of the matter. Um, when we talk about open access networks, people want to know what the open access means. Right? In Alberta, on the supernet, we've got 90 service providers on that network. The largest incumbent guys are on there as well. They have used the supernet to expand their, their business. Um, the biggest number of ISPs are homegrown ISPs, small businesses. We've got some guys that only service their community because their family lives in that community and they want internet access. Right? Um, and the thing is, with an open access network, they get the same price as the big telco. The, the telco guys will say, I want to be in 100 communities and, you know, I want X amount of meg, they pay the same per meg as the guy who's in the one community that's every single community. And that's a key differentiator. And it was really interesting when we first started off, we had uh, telcos come in and they'd say exactly that. I'm your biggest customer. What are you going to do for me? I don't want to see your, your rate structure that you got posted on the internet. It doesn't apply to me.
price of where you are from the global gateway is the cost that you're paying. They were paying you know, a ridiculous amount of money because of where they were. Right? This gives you a flat network that allows you to get past that. And this is how we do it. Right? So in the Mimi Center, you will have your telluses, your bells, uh, your ISPs connected in there. And then, uh, so it's fiber to the, to the community. And then the last local access part, that's done by the ISP in the rural example of uh, the open access network. And typically they use wireless. In, in, in yeah. Uh, if you have put up a wireless tower for a community, how far how far do you have to be from that tower to get the wireless? Uh, it depends on the technology that you use. Oh, okay. right. um, there's an online site radios. Uh, typically, the ISPs. Actually, no, I don't know the answer. So, like the technology radios. That's <coughs> I heard of. Well, it depends on, the, on where the top side is. If you've got line of sight, you can go a long way, right? Um, if you don't, it makes it really, really tough. The access technologies are actually um, changing a little bit. They were unbundling the copper local loop, right? At least the government's trying to. Uh, so you can get, uh, the ISPs can get to their customers in different ways, right? So wireless isn't the only way, it's the most prevalent way now. Right? Um, in the urban example, for uh, Singapore, for example, in the RFP process of doing this type of network, and it'll be fiber to the home for the entire country, which is really just one massive island city. Equally and available to everyone, driving economies, high capacity, cost effective, stuff we all talk about. Um, the real time bi-directional performance is really the thing that uh, that changes it, right? And not having that priced in, not having a distance priced in to what you pay is, is, is a good deal. Um, so now we get to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit now about the Alberta Supreme. Now, we talked about the incumbents and them not really liking this. Uh, you can understand that because this is playing in their backyard and they're one of their biggest um, benefits is they're already there. Right? But if you look at this slide, 3.3 million people. We've got just over a million here, just under a million here. In this corridor, there's about 800,000. Right? Uh, the red that you see? Not up to here, but more up to here. And everybody else is in a really, really far reaching area. Right? When we built this, this is, like I said, it's fiber for the most part. We IRU fiber from the incumbent. So the driver was how much of that the, the incumbent had was about 20%. And all of us, was from the bottom up to Grand Prairie, which is over to the left there. That's the majority of the fund, you know? Because uh, it didn't, to them, there was no economic power to go to the other places, right? Um, so now they've got, they fought at the beginning. They're not really happy that they were there. But it expands their business. And operationally, they don't have a network they have to take care of. They're just buying down at a really low cost, right? So an open access network can take over from that standpoint of uh, it's in every community, it's a high performing network, it's not, you know, uh, ATM or a frame relay, it's an MPLS uh, network, right? Um, so why wouldn't you go there, right? Well, other than the fact that we're the only ones in these communities, right? 